were doing this thing, we're playing all over and everything. And then I got a call from a folk singer, a folk hero manager saying, Bob Dylan would like to meet with you. And I had met him in passing, but I didn't really know him. And I didn't know what was up with this. So I went and met with him. We hung out. He was like very interesting guy. Never met anybody quite like him before, I have to say. And then we went and we played some music together. And still, I have no idea what, what's up. After we played music, he said, I've got some dates that I'm gonna play and I'd like you to come and play guitar with me on these dates. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, I'm, I'm with a, a band. I mean, we're a group. We don't go off and do things like that. You know, we're, we're a very tight-knit group. And he said, well, we have to figure this out. We have, what, what do we have to do to figure this out? So I said, maybe if we can get Levon to come too, the two of us, if we did that together, then, you know, then the other guys, you know, wouldn't think it was just me wandering off or something. Maybe that could work out. And, Le and Levon was like my partner, my brother. So I, you know, I just didn't want to do it without him. So they worked it out. Levon and I played these first two dates with Bob Dylan. And it was kind of insane, you know? It was, people hated it. They didn't like, they didn't disapprove. They violently hated it. And we're like, what's this shit about, you know? Like, we're just playing some music. What, what's the big deal? So anyway, we play these dates, and we think, that's really weird. Let's get out of here. So then, I meet with Bob again, and he says, that was great. <laughs> Let's do a whole tour. <laughs> so I thought, what's this guy on? You know, <laughs> why in the world would you come to that conclusion after this experience? So I said, well, we can't do it. We're, again, we're a group and everything. So we, he came to hear us play and decided he wanted us, the Hawks, to play with him. It was so unusual, but there was such a creative force going on with him that we were curious. What is this, you know? And maybe this is just a little phase that we're going through for a minute here. And people are realize, what are we making a big deal about? Let the guy sing his songs and whatever. He'll throw in a folk song here. So, so anyway, <laughs> we, we were trying to make excuses for our own decision. We ended up touring all over North America, all over Australia, all over Europe. And every night, just about every place we played, people threw stuff at us, <laughs> booed us, and sometimes charged the stage finally. <laughs> when this is happening, you can't help but think once in a while, maybe we're doing something wrong. <laughs> Lots of people were telling Bob, you gotta get rid of these guys. They're ruining the music. Get rid of them, we love you, blah, blah, all this stuff. He never budged. He never took a step back. And over the course of this tour, on occasion, we would listen to a tape of the concert we had just done. And we would listen and say, oh, you know what? We could do that better. Why don't we slow this one down? We'd make the, the kind of adjustments you would, trying to make the music, you know, better. Not that the people in the audience could care in the least <laughs> what we, the adjustments we were making. So anyway, on another night in the tour, we're listening to the show back, 
you know, just trying to filter it. Think also, like, how can everybody be so against this? How can that be? And we were listening to the show, and I said to the other guys in the Hawks, and I said to Bob, they're wrong. The world is wrong. This is really good. And, and, and at this point, things turned, and we started playing like in your face. We started playing louder, harder, bolder, and, and kind of just preaching our sermon of music. And people were like, what's wrong with these guys? Why do they keep insisting on doing this? So there was this, this back and forth thing going on, and somewhere inside you have to believe in what you're doing. And we actually thought what we were doing was really good, and that everybody was wrong. And in time, the world came around and we didn't change enough.